Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Crime Weekly News. I'm Derek Lavasser. And I'm Stephanie Harlow. And tonight we're talking about a case that I think you'll all be pretty familiar with, Adnan Syed, Heyman Lee, more importantly. This case is back in the news again. Uh, Adnan Syed's charges and his conviction were recently reinstated by an appellate court. Stephanie's going to go over some of the details for you. We're going to talk about it. Listen, everybody's covering it. We did a big series on it, an extensive series on it, so we had to cover it as well. But if you haven't watched that series, you might want to go check it out. If you're not familiar with the case, one of the few, it's a multiple part series, so it's going to take some time. But there's a lot of information in there that'll kind of give more context to what we're going to talk about here on Crime Weekly News, which is definitely a watered down short version, but we're basically going to go from the the appellate court reinstating the the convictions. Yeah. um, A lot of people have been messaging me asking for us to to talk about this. So that's good because I'm unclear about what is going on. And I know that you're going to clear it up for us uh, as much as you can. As much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So just to give like a basic 360 view of this case, Adnan Saeed was found guilty of murdering 18 year old Heyman Lee in 1999 when he was just 17 years old. He was sentenced to life in prison. But in 2014, the serial podcast raised some doubts about certain facts and evidence surrounding this case. And that thrust Adnan into the true crime spotlight. In February, of 2015, a Maryland court agreed to hear Adnan's appeal. And in November, he was granted a new hearing where he would be allowed to introduce new evidence. During this hearing, Adnan's lawyers argued that his original defense team had been negligent. And they also presented testimony from a woman named Asia McLean, who allegedly had seen Adnan in the library across from Woodlawn High School at the time of what they what they believe was the time of the abduction of Heyman Lee and the murder of Heyman Lee. And this made Asia the alibi witness. A new trial was scheduled for June. And at that time, both the state and the family of Heyman Lee were against this decision. They pushed back. And in 2018, Adnan got another win when the Maryland Court of Special Appeals upheld the previous decision to grant him a new trial and vacated his conviction, agreeing that he had received ineffective counsel. But then in 2019, Maryland's highest court, the Court of Appeals, ruled in a four to three decision that while the original lawyer had been deficient, Adnan had not been negatively affected by that deficiency. So a new trial was once again denied and his conviction was reinstated. In November of 2019, the Supreme Court refused to hear Adnan's case. And then when a four part docuseries about the case aired on HBO, it was revealed that DNA tests performed didn't find anyone else's DNA on Heyman Lee or her belongings. In 2022, Baltimore Press Prosecutors agreed to new DNA testing, feeling that it was warranted due to advances in genetic profiling. And a new Maryland law also gave prosecutors the ability to modify sentences of offenders who were under the age of 18 at the time of their crime, as long as they had served 20 years in prison, which Adnan had. On September 14th, 2022, prosecutors asked a judge to overturn Adnan's conviction because, according to them, an investigation had uncovered the potential of two alternate suspects. And they also claimed that this was key evidence that had been withheld during the initial trial. On September 19th, Judge Melissa Finn vacated the conviction, and at the age of 14, 41. After spending 23 years behind bars, Adnan walked out of prison a free man. Charges against Adnan were officially dropped the following October, and the Maryland Office of the Public Defender claimed it was because DNA evidence had excluded Adnan. But then, just this week, the Appellate Court of Maryland reinstated Adnan's murder conviction on March 28th, ruling that the lower court had violated the rights of Heyman Lee's brother, Young Lee, who had not been given adequate notification of the hearing hearing where the conviction had been vacated and he'd been unable to attend in person, although he had attended via Zoom. The appeals court has ordered the trial court to hold a new hearing on the motion to vacate Adnan's conviction. And this does not mean that Adnan is going back to prison necessarily because not yet. The, yeah, it doesn't mean he's going at this point. The appeals court has issued a 60 day stay of its ruling to give both sides time to figure out what comes next and what this all means. So, what does this all mean and what does come next? And that is where you come in, Derek. Well, I mean, listen, it's exactly, I mean, I thought you actually laid it out pretty good there. I don't know how much more I have to elaborate on, but there's a lot to unpack here. So first off, as you said, Hayes' brother, I'm I'm assuming on behalf of his family, felt like they were kind of railroaded with this. This is no secret. We covered this in Crime Weekly. And we talked about what we thought 
about how this whole process went down with with that non where I don't remember exactly what you said, but Marilyn Mosby, the DA, I felt like it was a politically motivated. She wanted to make some headline news. They kind of shoved this one through as quickly as they could, including not allowing Heyman Lee's family time to come out here and be present physically for for this appellate hearing. So I, I did feel like it was rushed and they wanted just to get it through as fast as possible. So now this brings me to a small section of the the ruling from the appellate court that I wanna read to you guys verbatim. We'll have it on the screen here, but I can actually just read it out loud and you guys can take it in because it, it's fascinating what's being said here. And I want you to weigh in on it too, Stephanie, because I have some opinions on how to interpret this. You may feel differently, so we'll see what everyone thinks. So here we go. Because the circuit court violated Mr. Lee's right, to notice of and his right to attend the hearing on the state's motion to vacate in violation of CP 8-301.1D, this court has the power and obligation to remedy those violations as long as we can do so without violating Mr. Syed's right to be free from double jeopardy, which very quickly, yeah, they're not charging him again with the same crime. They're just reinstating the old charge. So it's not, it's not double jeopardy. It's not, it's not a second conviction. They're just putting, they're just reversing what has been done. We can do that. And accordingly, we vacate the circuit court's order vacating Mr. Syed's convictions, which results in the reinstatement of the original convictions and sentence. We remand for a new legally compliant and transparent hearing on the motion to vacate where Mr. Lee is given notice of the hearing that is sufficient to allow him to attend in person. Now here's, I'm going to read this again, this whole section, because there's a comma here. It doesn't end right there. So let me read that little part again, where Mr. Lee is given notice of the hearing that is sufficient to allow him to attend in person, evidence supporting the motion to vacate is presented, and the court states its reasons in support of its decision. So my interpretation of that is, yes, they're going on the part of you violated Mr. Lee's rights, his family's rights to attend in person. So that's how we get this back into the courts, right? That's how we get this with a new trial. But it feels to me like they purposely also mentioned that during this hearing, while Mr. Lee and his family are present, evidence supporting the motion to vacate will be presented and the court must support their reasonings for wanting the charge to be vacated. It's not going to be just shoved through. They're going to want to see tangible evidence to support why they want to vacate the charge. It's not just going to be Mr. Lee and his family sitting there eating their piece of humble pie. There's going to have to be something presented in court that the judge can actually sink their teeth into, uh, that the court can sink their, sink their teeth into. So that's my interpretation of that little section. I feel like it's saying more without saying it as far as, oh, we're just doing this because Mr. Lee didn't have a chance to attend. Although that's the common narrative online. I was going to say, man, y'all, y'all be messed up on Twitter. All right. Because this is why I don't go on Twitter anymore. I understand everyone's confused we were all confused when the conviction was vacated to begin with, right? Because it all came, seemed to come out of nowhere. And, you know, everybody had their piece to say on Twitter, which is fine, because there's some people who truly believe that he's guilty. And when his conviction was vacated, people on Twitter were like, you know, pissed about it. And that's fine. But like, people are going after Heyman Lee's family on Twitter. Like, how dare they? Like, he was there in the Zoom meeting. He has nothing to complain. Yo, you can't say that unless you walked in this man's shoes and your sister was brutally murdered by somebody that you truly believe has been in prison for the past, you know, over 20 years, rightfully so. You can't say that unless you're in his shoes. These people lost their loved one forever. That's permanent forever. So let's let's steer it away from blaming Hayes' brother at this point, because I do believe that what Derek is saying is also accurate. And we didn't even talk about this before. I think they sort of buried the lead there. There, you know, right? They <laughs> were like, oh, percent. yeah, they were like, oh, because we want him to be able to be there because that's they the knew that's the technicality, right? Yeah, and they thought that people would be sensitive enough to not have the balls or the audacity to be like, screw Hayes' brother and what he wants, but they underestimated <laughs> the population on Twitter and their their lack of sensitivity for anything. <laughs> so yeah, they um, don't give a shit. Th- what really I think is like that the vacation of the, can you say vacation the vacation of the yeah, charge? Let's roll with it. Yeah. It came out of nowhere, man. And really, when we were like, why? They were like, well, his DNA wasn't on her. And no Mm. one's DNA was on her. That means whoever did it, 
covered themselves up and made sure their DNA didn't get on her. It doesn't necessarily mean that he did not do it just because his DNA wasn't there. The absence of evidence doesn't mean that he didn't do it, right? The absence of evidence is not exculpatory evidence. Yes. There you go. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not. It's it's uh I don't want to cut you off if you no, have any good. other things. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where this case absolutely fascinates me for multiple reasons. And uh, first off, it just shows the power of podcasts and the power of television and how a narrative, whether it's right, wrong or indifferent, can influence a large majority of people who haven't necessarily looked at the case through their own lens. And I say that because and this is where we where we get canceled. Right. But I say that because there's a very strong possibility that Adnan Syed killed Heyman Lee. And I, I don't say that lightly. But the reality is this, okay? This is indisputable. The guy doesn't have a solid alibi for the day in question. He was supposed to be at school. We know that he was not at school for a short period of time. He didn't check into class. Nobody can really account for him. You're supposed to be at track practice. It's all subjective. You have one person who says that she might have seen him at the library or she thinks she did. But we don't even know how concrete that is because there's other people that dispute that. That's number one. We have cell phone pings for this individual that puts him at the place where the body was eventually found. Heyman Lee was eventually found. We also have another cell phone ping, the one and only cell phone ping on the day when his alleged co-conspirator is arrested or brought into custody by police, where you see him pinging over again in the area where Heyman Lee was found. And also, by the way, where her vehicle was, was dropped off. Coincidence? I don't think so. Then you have some other unbiased witnesses. Um, I don't remember their names off the top of my head, but you have individuals who saw Adnan Saeed allegedly after this happened at their home. They're describing the shows that were on television at that time, and they're describing his behavior when the phone call comes in from the police and his reaction to that and his abrupt exit of that building where he's telling, hey, Jay, we got to go. We got to get out of here right now. Uh, I know that that's been brought into question lately, and she's done interviews since where she's like, well, maybe I, maybe it wasn't that day. But originally, that was her statement. Again, she has no skin in the game. There was also, uh, what was the name of the woman, Jay's girlfriend? or Yeah, um, Jen, Jen Pusateri. Thank you. Jen Pusateri also says that she saw them together later that evening. Adnan had dropped Jay off to her. And then finally, and I know this is the, the, the really part that, that strikes a chord with people, Regardless of what you think of Jay and his inaccuracies in his statement, he has never recanted his story. He said that he saw the body of Heyman Lee at Adnan Syed's vehicle in the trunk. And he also implicated himself by saying, I buried her body with Adnan Syed. That is compelling to me. So here's, here's where I stand on it. You may not believe that. I think a majority of you don't. But it's fascinating to me that there is a possibility that this man did, in fact, murder this woman and people are so upset with the fact that they want to try to get it right in the courts that Heyman Lee's family wants to make sure a hundred percent that this isn't the guy who brutally murdered their daughter, their sister. Again, there is nothing that's, I don't care who says this, how big of a following they have. There is no one that I've seen presented something that definitively rules Adnan Syed out. I do say that the court process and the investigation was shoddy. Maybe you have reasonable doubt. Maybe he shouldn't have been convicted in the first place, but he was. And so therefore that's where we're at. So we can go back and revisit it. I know we can get into, this is crime weekly news. So this is the shorter version, but ultimately yes, his DNA is not in the vehicle. That does not mean he didn't do it. Well, his DNA, his DNA was in the vehicle. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. His DNA yeah. was in the vehicle, but there's someone else's <laughs> DNA or there was no DNA from Heyman Lee on her body, right? There on was her no DNA on like, yeah. I mean, his D his DNA was in her vehicle, but they were like, well, she gave him rides and he was her boyfriend. So you'd expect his DNA to be in her vehicle. So it was on like the map and stuff. Remember? Like, yep, yeah. I'm with you. And they said there might be DNA on her shoes that doesn't match him. That belongs to someone else. Yeah, but they just said there was no DNA. Like in that little synopsis no, no, I read, none of his, none of his DNA, no DNA where I don't know. Like they said no DNA, but now they're saying there's DNA. I thought when we did the, in the, the whole episode, we said that there was Dude, DNA I that did not so match too. him. Like I thought so too. But then I went through this timeline. Listen, at the end of the day, I think little stupid things like that are exactly why people are all kind of worked up at this point because like, and, and I agree with you. I am like, well, physically uncomfortable that there is a chance 
he's guilty of this and there's people out there who literally have like made them and made him like their god like a know? hero yeah like because at that point you know ugh, unless you're a hundred million percent sure and like you can't be and i understand wanting justice but then you wouldn't have a problem with this going back to trial and having the evidence presented so i understand wanting justice and like if there is a chance he's innocent and his whole life was destroyed because of this that's tragic but like i can't find a comfortable place to sit on either side so i'm not going to like throw and my hat in anyone's ring convicted him <laughs> yeah i'm not going to i'm not going to throw my my hat in anybody's ring i'm not going to be like pro adnan anti adnan because it's just too split down the middle for me and i'm just not comfortable with Championing, championing, championing a, a possible murderer. I'm not like I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah, you got to be careful making him the poster child for wrongful convictions. Because first off, wrongful convictions are a real thing. They're a real thing, and they're happening. And I'll fight for anybody who I feel was wrongfully convicted. So, with you know, talking about Adnan in this light, I have no skin in the game. I make no money off either way. To say, saying I think he's guilty or not, I just see a lot of people out there who are supposedly experts and more smart than I am. Uh, saying things that just aren't true <laughs> and it's just factually not true. It's it's very possible that he he did do this. Not saying he did because here's the reality. I don't know if he did. The only person who truly knows if he did is Adnan Syed and maybe Jay and obviously Heyman Lee, who's no longer with us. So we'll never know. But here's why they can say he absolutely didn't do this. Because at this point, Stephanie, more than likely, whatever the most incriminating stuff about him has came out, whatever it is, Jay said that he was with him when he buried her body. So there's no other person who's going to come out and say anything. So they can say that and ride that wave all the way because the worst has already come out. So now they can just start to chip away at it. But yeah, I mean, I see him speaking at schools and people talking about him in a certain light. Better be careful because I would hate to see something where it comes out that this guy did do it. And they've been making him a hero. And I shouldn't even say that. That's an embellishment. So I take that back. But just making him the victim here, when in reality, he may be the murderer. No, they <laughs> that's made, a real they, possibility. I feel like some people made him a hero. And and that is, uh, you know, this whole this whole narrative at this point is emotionally driven, which understandably, this is humanity. You know, you feel for people. You have empathy. No one is more empathy or empathetic than a true crime community. Like, I will say that about the people who, you know, watch a lot of true crime. Like, they are very empathetic people. They really have a great ability to put themselves in the shoes of others. But sometimes that can sort of convolute things because you're not able to look objectively when you're that empathetic. And the fact of the matter is, this whole thing has been handled terribly. terribly. It's confusing Agreed. as all hell. I mean, not even talking about the investigation. We know. We talked about that in our series. The investigation was handled really poorly, terribly. And then this whole core process thing, like appealing and then going back and then they're like vacated, unvacated, vacated. Can they just keep vacating and unvacating this until the end of time is my no. question. And I will say that this is it's not right to add non. I no. will say that. No. Either way, whether he's guilty or not guilty, it's not right to him to keep going back and forth. No, so I will say that. Yeah. It's definitely not. So it's like somebody jumped the gun here. Most likely it was Mosby. Okay. thousand percent. <laughs> yeah. Mosby jumped the gun. I think she was trying for re-election. I think she was like, let me do something that's going to make me super popular. She's a politician. I put nothing past this woman. Okay. Yeah. So I think that, that that was probably a politically smart move for her. But in doing that, she threw this this kid, Adnan, into now a tailspin again. So now he's yeah. out. He's talking to schools, and now they're like, eh, "You might have, you might have to go back to prison, my friend." And it's it's ridiculous. Talking at schools, eating wontons, the whole nine. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not right to him. It's not right to him. Yeah, I could, I, I could talk about this case for hours because it's one of those things where empathy. Yeah, you gotta have empathy for both sides, both Adnan and the victim's family, because someone killed her, killed Heyman Lee. Someone. Someone out there is responsible for this. And I will say there's some evidence that suggests it was Adnan. Uh, it's not often that you get cases where a co-conspirator will come forward and say, yeah, I was there when we buried her body and he was with me. Again, he's never recanted his story. It's changed slightly over the time. And I know that we've picked that apart. We picked it apart as well. Maybe he's lying. Maybe it was him alone. But he's still adamant about the fact that Adnan Syed murdered Heyman Lee. And that's, I don't, you don't often see, you'll see people implicate someone else 
when they have an axe to grind, you don't normally see them implicate Implicate themselves, themselves. they incriminate themselves just in just to get the other guy. Now, I know he might have got a deal and all this stuff. He might have got a lesser lesser sentence. Any time in prison for a crime you didn't commit, it's not a pretty very good deal to me. But you guys going to wait on the comments below? Fully aware we're going to get we're going to get some heat for this. But this is the what we're saying is the is actually the truth, and it's it seems like certain cases, certain facts work, and for others they don't. Right? That confirmation bias. I talked about Rebecca Zahau when we covered this case uh, you know, back in the you know a few months ago or whatever, and with Rebecca Zahau, I know a lot of you know that case. I went out there and covered it, and ultimately no one was charged with their murder. They ruled it a suicide after like multiple investigations, but there was a civil trial. And in that civil trial, they found Adam Shackney, the, the father of, uh, the husband of Rebecca Zahau, they found his brother responsible for her death, basically saying it was the preponderance of evidence, you know, less of a threshold in civil court that she, he was more likely than not responsible in some way for her death, basically saying he probably killed her, right? They got like $30 million. In that case, and I know this personally, there was zero, zero DNA found in her room that, that implicated the brother, zero. Um, and people said, well, that doesn't really matter. He could have wore gloves. He could have wore a Tyvek suit. So that doesn't influence at all because the majority of people think he did do this. Most of the community was like, yes, this is a win. Glad they got their money. I'm glad they got some type of justice. This guy should be in prison. Wait a minute. There's zero DNA in there, right? Well, so it's all about DNA. what supports the narrative that you already believe. And that's human. Go. That's there it's normal. Go. There you go. But I can't stress it enough. And you probably won't believe me. And I really don't care. I really don't know Adnan either way. I don't care either way. I don't have any ill will against this guy. I don't know him. All I'm doing is going off the facts as we know them. And to me, there's nothing here that screams, this guy is absolutely innocent. And I won't say names, but I will tell you, it's not just you guys out there on Twitter. We're not just punching down or whatever. Like there's, there's people that I call friends and colleagues that are considered experts in this field that I see posting stuff about this topic and the way they frame it, I'm flabbergasted that they've been in law enforcement or the criminal justice field for 20, 30 years, some of them, and they're presenting this like Adnan Syed is the victim here. It's crazy. I don't. I just don't know what they're reading. Can that I I'm tell not. you something that, <laughs> that I'm also not going to name names? There are people in this field that I know that I used to be friendly with who are doing the same thing publicly, like saying, oh, he's a victim. He needs to be like justice for Adnan. And behind the scenes, these motherfuckers are like, yeah, I think he did it. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So that's a concern. That is a concern because now, because people are afraid to go against the set narrative. Now you don't even know. And it just reinforces the the bubble that people already live in to the point where there's no differing opinions to even take into account. Everything is just like spoon fed to you and everybody's just going along because they're afraid of being canceled, because they're afraid of getting in trouble, because they're afraid of getting called out. And honestly, like, I just don't know when being objective and not like throwing your hat into anybody's ring until the chips are, you know, where they lie, when that became a hot take or when that became controversial. It's so concerning to me. And honestly, once again, this is why I do not spend any time on Twitter anymore, because it's just an echo chamber and everybody's just stroking each other off and like, yeah, yeah. Or they're like, you suck, you're stupid, your opinion's dumb, and I hope you die. And no one's (laughs) having like intelligent, productive conversations. Okay. No yeah. one. And it's yeah. concerning. This is this is what I will say about this case that I do think should happen. I, I think the appellate court made the absolute right decision. This was shoved down their throat. It never should have been vacated in the first place without a proper proceeding where Mr. You know, Heyman Lee's family was allowed to attend. And, and more importantly, substantial he evidence, attended via Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> substantial evidence was presented to say overwhelmingly there's this guy did not do this. You got the wrong guy. I want to let them let them show what they have other than the absence of evidence, right? Let them show what they have. And, and what I do think should work, go on behind the scene is if there is DNA that is on the shoe or skirt, whatever, of Heyman Lee or anything that would suggest someone else may have done this, it is the responsibility of the DA and the, lo- the law enforcement department in charge of this to vet that thoroughly. Because even though this case has been tried and it's, there's a conviction, if they have new evidence that comes forward at a later date, 
or even if we want to go as far as saying someone else didn't investigate it the right way when it was originally done. It is the responsibility of the people on it now to investigate those leads thoroughly. And if they find something that would exonerate Adnan Syed, it is their responsibility to bring that forward. So that as something like at something like this, a trial where that can be presented and he can be the charges can be vacated. I want to see what they have. I want to see what they have, because at this point, it doesn't feel like they have much. And I truly believe in my heart. That is why the uh, appellate court reverse this decision. That's my honest opinion. Do you think if you were on a jury and you heard what they had initially, you would have found him guilty? You would have been able to find him guilty? We covered the case and I pride ourselves on how deep we cover it. But if you were in that jury room at that trial, there's so much more I would have heard and seen that may have swayed me one way or the other. If you're asking me just based on what we covered, I would have found him guilty. I don't believe there's enough reasonable doubt to suggest that it could be someone else. I've heard speculation about different names. I don't think the investigation was done properly, was done thoroughly. But for me, the J statement would have carried a lot of weight. I know he's getting, given inconsistent statements, but I've never, I've never had a case where a guy implicated himself just to get someone else because what was the theory that maybe he was pissed because... Adnan had talked to his girlfriend Stephanie, or something. Yeah, his girlfriend. The Stephanie, ultimate, yeah. you know, biting your nose to spite your face. Like it'd be ridiculous. It was a stupid theory. I mean, it was stupid. ridiculous. That's a, and then that's a I know theory. there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of you know controversy over the cell phone pings, and we talked about it in the last episode that we covered. I didn't find it as as incriminating as some that Adnan didn't attempt to call her after she went missing or page her. That doesn't bother oh, me. Oh, I did. I know you did. If I remember, it's coming back to me. But I will tell you. When you brought up the fact that after Jay was arrested out of like a, what was it? Like 10,000, thousands of pings over that time frame, only one time his phone pinged at the location where Hayes body was mm -hmm. and where the vehicle would eventually be found. Mind you, they had not been found at that point yet. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew where her body or the vehicle was. Yeah. And yet the day that Jay was arrested, but he was arrested for something completely, unrelated. completely different. Yeah. But Adnan like didn't know that. Thing. Yeah. And sure enough, his phone pinged at those two locations only on that day. So for me, I did find myself kind of like going along with the mainstream narrative when I was listening to Serial because they were like, oh, these cell phone pings were absolute garbage, right? Like that was the summary of it. Like blah, 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 blah absolute garbage, throw it all out. None of it counts. But then when we were doing the case for Crime Weekly, I started looking deeper into it and I found all of these, you know, like statements from like FBI agents, you know, cell phone experts. And they were like, well, we don't, we don't necessarily say like, they're all bad. Like they're, yeah, they're pretty out. accurate. Don't look at this. <laughs> yeah. They're like pretty accurate. I mean, as accurate as any cell phone pings at that time would be, it's not like these specific cell phone pings were just complete garbage, you know, they're just normal cell phone pings and as accurate as they can be in any other situation they were. But they literally made you feel like those cell phone pings just were completely fabricated and there was like some glitch in the matrix and the cell phone pings got all like shooken up. And then, you know, when you get deeper into that, you kind of see through what the veil basically what they want what they want you to see you see through that and that's why we always encourage people to do your own research don't listen to anyone don't listen to us i mean we talk a lot man so you know there's you're getting a lot of information but still even after that like if something sticks in your head and you're like this doesn't feel right that we said go and look it up man because there's a wealth of information out there that you're not getting go read the police reports go read the the, the, the court transcripts scripts. I mean, go do that. You know, this is not to bash anyone, but it kind of piggybacks off what you said. It's human nature when you have a personal or financial interest in something to want it to be true. And I've seen this numerous times on numerous cases that I've worked. So uh, you really got to be careful who you're listening to, because there are people out there that have made careers off cases like this, or specifically this case. And so they have, they have a lot of skin in the game. And they have a lot to lose if for some reason it's it's learned that Adnan did in fact do this. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine if that, imagine tomorrow if a video came out and proved that he did it? Yeah, well, all what, these are, people, what are the odds of that? And then they could just happening. be like, well, we were sure. Like, well, yeah, how could no, we possibly never happening. know? Like, it's, yeah. it's never happening, which is why yeah. people are. Which is why are, they're so gung-ho about it. Because they know. They know. They know that there's they nothing know. else coming out. This is it. This is it. So overall, 
just to reiterate it again, because I, I know what people want to say. Oh, for me specifically, bad cop wants to convict the, you know, the, 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 you know, the innocent guy. No, I'm looking at it, just evaluating the facts. There's definitely problems with this case, but I said it in the original series and I'll say it again. Now, when I ha heard that they vacated the charges, I was looking for what they, what Remember, they based that we off were, of. We were like, well, what was it? What was this big, like bombshell? Yeah. What was it that rules him out definitively where there, a court is going to overturn what a jury decided? I mean, this was the DA basically coming out and saying, yeah, I don't think he did it. I don't care what the jury decided. We're going to we're going to throw it out. We're going to vacate it. He's free. Yeah, dude, now, that was that was Mosby going rogue. She went rogue. Yeah. And so I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, but I would think that they're going to have a chance for a new right now. As it stands right now, Adnan Syed is is guilty of murder. He, he is, is, is a convicted murderer. He's out free. I don't necessarily have a problem with that right now because clearly he's going to be on his best behavior. I don't think he's a, a threat to Dude, society exactly. at all. Exactly. He's definitely not a threat. He's to not society. a threat at all. At all. But is so, that the point? It's not the point. It's so, I, the but point. I, I agree with not sending him back right now. I think the proper procedure needs to take place. And I will say this, and this might be surprising. This may be very surprising after just the speech I went on. But man, you have to serve the time for the crime committed. So yeah, he should go back to prison if if this if this new trial takes place and it's and it's denied, if the appeal is denied, right? And the vacation is not reinstated, he should go back to prison. But I will say, it does bring up an interesting question because obviously it's about rehabilitation. That's what that's what this is supposed to be about, right? Just and, and you know, that's what it's supposed to be. And here we have a man I think that's who subjective. Appears Right. I'm with you. But I'm just, you know, I don't think you disagree with what I'm saying here. But the idea behind it is to have them go in, you know, serve time for the crime they committed, become a constructive member of society again, once again, where they can be reintegrated at some point. He did how many years in prison, Steph? Dude, do 20, 23 or something. Do you think like that? So I'm, I'm with you for other crimes. But do you think that somebody can really be rehabilitated after they've taken another human life? Like, I think that something like that changes you forever, especially not like not like, oh, accidentally. Obviously, that would still change you forever. But the fact that you purposely, knowingly ended a life, I don't feel like you can come back from that. I feel like you're forever changed and not in like a super good way, you know? And I do, I am really like, you know, old school, old testament, Hammurabi's code, eye for an eye. If I'm Haman Lee's family, I'm not worried about this dude being rehabilitated. I'm not worried about that at all. I'm worried about him giving his life for the life that he took from Hay and the life that he took from her family and her community and her friends. Like, I don't care if you're rehabilitated. I don't care if you're mm -hmm. sorry. I don't care at all. And yep. honestly, like, I know this is once again controversial and I'm not over here like death penalty, death penalty, but there has to be. We've lost accountability in society over the past like decades people don't want to take accountability for anything anymore and it sends a very poor message to others it sends a message like oh you can make a mistake the worst mistake by killing somebody and call it a mistake and then say you're better and you found God or you feel bad and you can be rehabilitated and then society will accept you again. I want to send the message that if you take willingly and purposely another human life, society never accepts you again. You're never coming back. I never want to see your face ever again. You don't deserve to be a part of this society any longer. That's the message we should be sending. And I don't know when we stopped. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Uh, I mean, you went you went off there. <laughs> I disagree with the main sentiment that I'm also in the same breath of you where it's like it's an eye for an eye. You can't the impact that you've had not only on your victim, but also the victim's family. They're never made whole again. And I think you're re-traumatizing them by you walking the streets again at a later date, knowing that the person who mur murdered their daughter or son is just walking around living their life, even if they lost 20 years of it, doesn't matter. That's why we have to have a standard set of rules and we have to discourage things like murder. Yeah, okay? yeah, we got to. That's why yeah, we got to discourage that. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm with you. No, I, and I agree with you. I think that if this this appeal is is not does not go through and the charges are not vacated, regardless of how you feel about Adnan, he would have to go back to prison at that point. I don't think that there's any way he wouldn't go back to it's prison really at that tough. point. It's a really tough situation. And, it's, and I will say, based on the circumstances of this case, that is not fair to Adnan. 
you know, because there is a world where he didn't do it and he just got a taste of freedom and now he's back there. But I'm going off of not necessarily what I believe, but what the, what the jury decided. That's the way our, that's the way our justice system works. They found him guilty of murder. So unless he's got another trial is broken, but yeah. Yeah. And that's a whole different story for a different day, but I know it can seem like we're, we have this like dislike for Adnan. I don't have a dislike for him. I do think it's very, I do think it's very possible that he murdered. Hey, Min Lee. In fact, I think, I think he's very likable, which is (laughs) is uncomfortable for me. (laughs) Right. Yeah. He's because I, I I think, yeah, I think he's super likable and he seems super sweet. And like, you you find yourself, you find yourself kind of like putting aside everything, you know, and you just want to like take him and hold him and like, you know, but what do people expect? Protect him. What do you expect him to come out and be like, you know, Oh, I'm the big bad guy. And like, obviously he was gonna, always, no, he was always sweet. You know, I he disagree was, with that. See, like when he was a kid, there was things about him that we were talking about with him that he wasn't like the sweet innocent guy. Yeah, but guy, he was like though. a cute little like rebel rogue. You yeah, know, he I'm wasn't doing there. anything crazy. It was like, no, 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 yeah. you know, th- he was, he was cute. He was sweet. And, and you just, you don't think that he's capable of it just from looking at him and hearing him talk. And then you see like all of this other stuff and you're like, shit, yeah, there's, what's going on? There's some things in this case that do not look good for him yeah. till till this day that don't look good for him and haven't been completely ruled out as a possibility. Mm-hmm. Evidence that was submitted, witness testimony that was given, the cell phone pings again, et cetera. A lot of stuff here that a jury ultimately said, you know what? Uh, we believe he did it mm-hmm. and they found him guilty. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if we'll do another Crime Weekly news on it unless there's some like big news about what happens. Uh, if If he's found, if the charges are vacated. It is what it is. We're back to where we were. If they're not, he's probably going to go back to prison. And that's where we stand on it. But we wanted to cover it. Our opinions have not changed. We don't know if he did it or not. Ultimately, it's up to the justice system, but it has to be done the right way. And we both said at the ending of the Crime Weekly segment that we didn't feel the way the charges were vacated. It didn't fit. It didn't seem right. It seemed rushed. And it seemed like there was something behind it. So now apparently... The appellate court agrees with us and many, and many others. Yeah, they better get it straight, man. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, they got to they got to have a more thorough trial where the Marilyn Mosby has to go in there in front of Heyman Lee's family and everyone else and present their case more appropriately. They'll have more time to prepare now, which is great. Not long, but they, honestly. They, well, they better have their eyes dotted and their t's crossed because I don't think this is my opinion going in there and saying, well, his evidence isn't, you know, his DNA is not at the not in the car or not on Heyman Lee's body. I agree. I it's not going to be enough. They better have more. And they may have that letter they talked about where there's other potential suspects. But they again, need to bring those other suspects out, which honestly, yeah, yeah, as they you go, know, they got to vet them. Yeah. As like who I am, I'm kind of excited to see what else you got, because yeah. you can't just be all like friggin ooh, like ooh, you know, obtuse and be like, oh, yeah, we have other sus. Who are they? Yeah. Who are they? We have the Get right to, to know. And Get his family has the right to know. Who are they and what do you have on them? We want to know. Yeah. It can't just be speculation. Oh, there's a possibility that it might be this person. So therefore, we're going to let him out. Doesn't work like that. They got to present something that's overwhelming. And there's going to be a lot of eyes on this case. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a lot. we'll see how it goes. Ultimately, we really are just thinking of Hayes' family. I know that's where I'm at. I I feel bad for Young and his family where they're kind of being, t- not everybody, but they're kind of looking like the quote unquote bad guys. Dude, at they've this point been right villainized, now. man. How yeah. did that happen? What yeah. what freaking world do we live in? And you know, listen, that's maybe, can happening? I play devil's advocate? I always do that and people love it so much. You know, I almost think that- That's a lie. Yeah, I almost <laughs> think that some people, the more rational people are villainizing the court system and not necessarily young and his family because they're, they're that. screwing this case up royally, royally by having this guy go back and forth. So I did see some of the stuff you're referring to, but I think people are really, truly upset with the court system in general, that this is allowed to happen where you have As someone. They should be honest. Yeah, because like agreed. I said, my question was, and I don't know if you can answer this, what, what happens? Okay. They vacated again. What? In like a year? Can they be like, eh? Uno reverse card changed our mind (laughs) and like pull it back. Like when does it become a double jeopardy or like a, you know, a civil rights issue at this point where it's like, stop yanking this dude around, make up your mind one way or the other. This better be the final decision. And there better be something like legally set where it's like, okay, we've done the trial. We're sure one way or the other. And there's no more like Hail Marys or like the 13th hour kind of like thing here. If the charges are vacated again, 
and I believe that the the family, Heyman Lee's family, maybe someone else could could put it in appeal to the appellate court again. But the appellate court could look at it and say, you know what? No, we believe it was right this time. We were, we send it back and we remand the charge. Or they could over. look at it and say, you're right. Let's go back. Good. <laughs> Good. This yeah, is that'd be ludicrous, crazy. man. That'd be crazy. I'm definitely interested to hear what you guys have to say. We have been doing this long enough to know that this is a polarizing case. Just the name. We saw what happened on uh, our last videos, and we saw. We I thought know people were actually us. very like receptive to to us trying to to be fair open. and unbiased. People were like very. I, I I was worried. I agree. There were some people who actually said like I've kind of changed my my mind on it, and we're, that wasn't our and motive there at all it's just we were coming through our own conclusions and you guys were coming along for the ride so but we have a very like mature and intelligent audience not like that twitter mob out there you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. unless unless you guys are putting timestamps in there then then we then then i'm blocking you I'm just video kidding. starts you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome everyone's been great with that you know? yeah, um they've been awesome. it's amazing they got it all little side note lighter note here just to end the episode guys derek came through Crime Weekly merch and your kids were wearing it. Everyone mm -hmm. was loving it. The mm -hmm. mugs. We've been seeing you guys. If you, I didn't say this lap, last episode, but if you got the Crime Weekly merch and you do like it, make sure you're wearing it. Make sure you're taking a selfie. Make sure you're tagging us. That's the that's the payoff for us is to see that the material and the colors and the graphics and the you know the quality of the the digital the not the digital print the screen print is something that you guys get and it makes sense to you where you're like oh man this actually really is soft because those are the little things that we don't talk about but go on behind the the scenes so it's a big it's a lot of gratification for us when you guys notice those little things in fact i will say so i got these i got every color t-shirt in every color in a small and a medium right and here's my plan <laughs> I'm going to turn the smalls into cute little crop tops for the summer. I'm super excited about it. I'm going to wear them under my overalls. Like I'm going to be rocking criminal coffee merch forever. Sounds like a photo shoot to me. That's right. Don't do it for free. Get Nev on that. <laughs> we need a photo shoot. Okay. That's all we got. Listen, as always, we just want the best for the family. We appreciate you guys hearing us out. The best thing you can do if you agree with us or disagree with us is way down in the comments below. Keep it respectful, but we're open to hearing everyone's opinion. We just want what's best for everybody involved. So we'd love to hear your comments on it. Uh, if you like the content or if you don't like it, just thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever you want. It works either way. It's the same thing for us. So keep it engaged. Keep it, keep responding to us. Again, keep it respectful. We'll have no problem with it. I don't have to be respectful, man. You're not my dad. We want to thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Crime Weekly News. We will see you next week. Stay safe out there. You're not my real dad. <laughs> <laughs>